Hey guys, welcome to this soldering tutorial video for the Quinn LED DIG Uno. What is the DIG Uno? Well, instead of my prior boards, which were analog dimmers, where the whole LED strip would become one color, these are controllers for digital or digitally addressable LED strip, where each LED or pixel or whatever you want to call it can become its own color. Now, this isn't an introduction video to what it does and how it works, but this is the soldering tutorial, as I said. If you'd like to learn more, though, check out quinled.info, and there I'll have tutorials and wiring guides and how much the board can handle and all kinds of stuff listed there, including parts list and where you can order the PCBs, everything you need to know. There will also be highlight pictures per component type, if you want to solder these yourself, because by the time you see this, the boards will be up for order and you can grab some. So let's uh, get right into the soldering tutorial. And if you have any questions, you can always drop them in the comments or ask them on the Discord. Okay, let's uh, solder one together. Okay. Let's start at the back of the board and solder on the SMD components. We start with the pads for the diodes, the capacitors and the resistors. We start by only tinning one side of the pad, then adding the component and then after that tinning the second side. That way you can orient the component and solder it onto the board easily. As I mentioned during the introduction, if you don't know where all the components go, go to the soldering video article on quinled.info and there I will have some highlighted images where you can see where all components should go. For instance, some of the pads we are not soldering in this video because they have a specific use and we're not using those right now. The version of the Quinn LED DIG UNO in the video is the version 2 revision 4, but the one I will be releasing to the public will be revision 5, so that might look slightly different. If you were expecting the most perfect soldering video on the planet, well, this isn't it. This was just me trying to solder a board and, well, I recorded it, and I thought, hey, Let's just use this video for my soldering tutorial instead of my perfectly everything goes well every time videos, which, well, in reality isn't the case. I'm no soldering expert either. So if you make some mistakes or even screw up a board, that's okay. You've got plenty, components are cheap, so have fun with it. Minimum resistors, capacitors and diodes on this board are one 4.7K resistor, four 0.1 UF capacitors, one 10F capacitor, and then two SS24 diodes and one SS12 diode. But all components and the highlighted layouts are available on quinled.info, so make sure to check those out, or just keep following the video and do the same on your boards. To make sure all pads make good contact with components, I reheat some of the soldering pads to make sure they fuse together well with the component we put on there. Okay, with the SMD components on the back of the board done, we flip over the board to the front and start with the level shifter. You might need to bend the legs a little bit, but once you do, it should fit in perfectly. Okay, let's solder its legs. Okay. 
Then let's continue with the pin headers. You need two times five pin headers and then two times three pin headers. I use different colors for the voltage and GPIO selection because that differentiates it. And well, especially for the voltage selection, if you get it wrong, you might blow up some components. So that's why I like using red pin headers and a red jumper later on. With the pin headers done, let's move on to the screw terminals. I'm using a 2 input one at the input of the board and a 4 output one at the output of the board. If you don't have a 4 output one, you can link two of the two outputs together to form a 4 output you can use in the same place. Some of these contacts are directly linked to ground planes, so you might need to sink in a lot of heat to make sure the solder spreads nicely and creates a good bond. With the input terminals done, we're going to solder on the standoffs and the ESP8266 or ESP32 you're going to use. Now, I like to do this in sort of a sandwich way, where you take the female headers you solder to the board and the pin headers you solder to the microcontroller and insert those together and then add the microcontroller on top. By doing this, it auto aligns all those components and then you can solder the pin headers to the ESP module and then after that, the female headers to the bottom of the board, it then automatically solders straight and fits together. Okay, once you're done soldering the top of the microcontroller and the bottom of the female headers on the board, you can take off the microcontroller from the board so we can continue soldering the rest of the components. Next up is our fuse holder and the spacing for these is pretty tight, so make sure you push the metal parts all the way through the openings in the board. Then also make sure to apply some hefty amount of heat and solder so that they really stick together. Okay, the next step is optional. If you want a 5 volt only board, you don't need to solder this DC-DC converter. But if you want your board to be 12 volt compatible also, you will need to add this component. If you're not going to use it and you want your board to be 5 volt only, you can just leave it off. Okay, next up is the big capacitors. Make sure to stick the long leg of the two legs of the capacitor through the hole where the plus is noted and the short one through the hole where the minus is noted or the white space you see on the board.
I'm using some side cutters to cut off these legs. If you don't have them, I have a tools and equipment page, again on quinlid.info, where you can find everything from the side cutters to maybe desoldering wire or soldering equipment or anything else you might need when, while soldering these boards. Make sure to check that out. Okay, last up is again an optional component, but I like putting them on there, and that's a little temperature sensor. The legs of these are very tiny, but it's fun to be able to read out the temperature, and especially if you're going to be putting a high load on the board, it can be nice to be able to keep an eye on the temperatures, especially if you're going to mount it inside of an enclosure or something like that. To make 100% sure that these legs aren't crossed at the solder joints, I'm using a magnifying glass with built-in LEDs to check if there really is separation between them. Okay, let's uh, add the jumpers and then the microcontroller, and well, the board is done, ready to use. Some people might note that the fuse holder, if you have a fuse in there, is blocking the USB port of the microcontrollers, but this is by design. If you have a power supply connected and you want to program the board, take the board off of the Quinn LED and do so with a micro USB cable connected to the controller and your computer. Then when program is done, reinsert it or reinsert the fuse and everything should be fine. Hooking it up to a computer while you also have an external power source connected eh, can get kind of iffy. Okay, everything looks great and this board is ready to use. Now I know these soldering jobs might look daunting at first, but as you can see, I stumbled my way through it, and so can you. And to round off, as you can see, we can use both the ESP8266 or an ESP32 on the board, and you can just select which one is best suited for your task in regards to programs that run on it or processing power that you might need. And with that, these boards are done, and I wish you good luck soldering your own. Let me know in the comments how that went and maybe drop in on the Discord and show us your projects. We always love to see. So, good luck soldering your own boards and thanks for watching.